because of your previous experience in another language with File.io, I am not going through some of the basics about File.io. I'm getting into, frankly, right into the code. So what you're going to see here, and this is also my notes somewhere in the pages below here, because I'm skipping a lot of things of stuff that you should know already. Here's our first exercise in coding that I want you to go to right off the bat. Now be careful, I'm giving you obviously the code that you see here, but there's also some questions that I'm going to go over here in a minute that you really need to make sure that you find out and talk about as well. And that's number one, which you see identify all of these areas. And then there is a number two that happens to be frankly on the next page. So go through those two problems uh, hit pause on this, go through those two problems, and then I'm going to go over and answer all of those here in a minute. So again, focus on the code, focus on the questions underneath of it, and get back to me here in a minute. So hit pause, do some work, and I'll see you in a moment. So I wanted to start with an example because there's actually a lot of similarities of what you originally start off with maybe in Python or C++, but there's definitely a Java portion that happens towards the end here, and I'll explain what's going on. So you'll also notice I'm trying to comment on a lot of things so that you kind of figure out what also is going on, but let's start from the beginning here. So first of all, what's really file I.O. here is very similar to what we had in C++. We're going to have some type of try and then catch. Now, Java uses several different types of this, so be careful here. So I'm using a scanner and a file reader. Yes, there is a file writer if I wanted to write out to a file, but this one I'm going to be reading in from which is, looks like it's going to be scores.txt. Now, a couple things about this line that are really important. Number one, you're going to see other versions online of how people read in using Java. Does it matter? Yeah, it's functionality. Really, it's based on you know what options are you given by using a file reader over something else. Um, this next part is the actual name of the file, scores.txt. The name's not really important, but how it's listed is. In this example, scores.txt must be in the same directory as your .java file. That's, that's this program here. So you have to be in the same directory. You might see some slashes and directory type of uh, URL mean that's somewhere else other than where this current file is, but it must be in the same directory apparently for this code to work. In our try catch, back to that again, you know we're going to try our in file here to go ahead and try to, well, hopefully work out here. Notice I have scanner in file equals null. That's that variable that, frankly, right now we're sending a null. We're going to try to connect it to a file using the scanner and the file reader. And if it doesn't work out, boom, we have our catch that we have very similar to C++, just basically telling us file now found error and then what we do about it, and then that's about it. So that's our try catch just to open up the file. Next, here's where things get different. Hmm, well, the while loop is about right. This one's going to have in file dot has next line. Now that's in C++, we have in, we have almost like a CN type of thing that we can do. <coughs> it is somewhat similar, but as you know, there's no overloaded operator, so that's why we have to have the function of has next line. So it's going to check to see if there's a line in scores.txt. And yes, it's a while loop, which frankly you should be used to from your C++ days or Python days, whatever. Here's where things get interesting. I'm going to go over this a little bit more. But what Java does is called a tokenizer. What it's going to do is it's going to use that line that you read in from the file, which is really basically going to be, which is done right here with our string line equals in file dot next line. So that's how we're reading in the line. So again, this was not reading in the line. This is just checking to see if it's there. This next line with string line, that's the one that's actually going to be pulling stuff from that line. And notice, by the way, it will be the entire line. 
So if it's the entire line, I'm going to have to do what's called next is tokenize it. And that's breaking it up into pieces. And by default, we break it up into pieces that have spaces in between that line of data that's kind of showing up as an example right now. After that, we're going to go ahead and start well, this is more of a Java stuff that you've probably seen before, but we're going to start tokenizing some of the items in there to convert them from strings to integers or something of that nature. Again, this is actually very similar to C++, because remember, everything from a file is going to be a string. Now we've got to convert it to our integers that we want or other data types that we want, and that's exactly what's happening here in that line. Now, the rest of this is just debugging stuff, but... The scores is the one that we're getting. There was only one value in scores.txt, converted it to an integer, then we added it to an array, and we added uh, an increment to that to make sure we add it to the next spot in the scores as well. So that's the overall setup when we get into our scenario of Java, which is very similar to C++. We open up the file, we create a while loop to see if we really need to go through it, then we really tokenize or break up the data into our respective integers because they're all strings at first, and our integers, floats, or whatever, and then roll from there and adding it to our data sets that we have somewhere in our own program. So that's the overall setup that we have for our Java code compared to C++.